If you're having a problem with fungus gnats, this video is all about my problems with them, as well as some solutions that might help you. So I started to notice these little fruit fly style bugs. I was like, whatever, I got like vegetables here and leaves and decaying matter, so I guess. But I was wrong. Moving the soil, you can see the larva. It's a fungal gnat, and I gotta get rid of them. So I've got a bit of a infestation. You can see the larva here. There's a couple on my fingernail. These are fungal gnats. The larva actually eat roots. The adults don't do anything. To get rid of them, I gotta let the soil dry up around the seedlings. First, when I read that comment, I was like, no, that's more of an antimicrobial and something that helps prevent like bacteria and stuff. But yeah, it should help kind of control some of the fungus they eat on, so it might help to control it. And then I googled it. It is a method to try out. Thank you. Okay, so just a little bit of a comment on the cinnamon. Cinnamon is actually just mildly antimicrobial. I think that's how you say it. Meaning it prevents some of the bacteria or fungus from growing and harming plants and stuff like that. The reason why it might work for something like a fungal gnat is because it takes away the food source. The food source is fungus growing within this living soil. So in terms of bugs on your plants, it's generally not going to help. And it's always best to get a better idea on what type of bugs you have on your plants, like if they're aphids or something. A lot of the leaf dwelling bugs you can actually spray off with like a stronger stream of water. Like bring them into your shower and spray them down with a shower head. There are also things called insecticidal soaps that are generally safe for humans to interact with, but not insects. There are also home methods that you can create out of dish soap. And as well, you might want to look into neem oil. It spritz the leaves, it essentially suffocates the bugs. Yeah, cinnamon is more just for my situation, removing food for the bugs. I literally can't bring myself to do that. You know, I was actually wondering if nematodes would work for this because they kill those soil dwelling like bugs like grubs. So I might take you up on that. I'm going to try with the uh, cinnamon, the peroxide to start with, but I am going to get some nematodes because I use them for grub control anyways in my lawn. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to make an attempt at controlling the fungal gnat problem I am having in the grow beds here in my basement. We're going to use 3% hydrogen peroxide diluted in water. The rate I'm using is about 250 mil per liter for safety. And we miss the soil. So I let this fungal gnat problem that I'm having get way out of hand. They're everywhere. So I'm going to make the tough decision and actually just cut down what I have, throw these bastards into the freezing cold, and start getting ready for my spring seeding. Because I don't want these to get in my other house plants. Right now they're isolated to the basement. Boo hoo. That's a lot of kale. It's all good for my guinea pigs. The rest of the greenery is going into the composter. And the soil is going to sit in the frigid cold in my vegetable garden. Look at the amount of larva. So long, suckers. Lastly, I need to trap all the adults. So we got apple cider vinegar with a little bit of dish soap. The fly strips. And we gotta give these the same sterilization and cleaning techniques that we used on these. I don't want these things around when I start my seedlings. This is the most important thing that you're not doing when you're starting your seeds. Whether you're starting in a seed trip or you're starting in various pots. This one simple act will save you an entire world of issues. Cleaning and sterilizing. Here's how. My guess is that a pot like this, or a tray like this, clean enough, right? You're just putting dirt back in it. I was the same way. Believe it or not, this and this can actually hide harmful bacteria, viruses, or fungi. Step one is warm soapy water. I suggest Dawn. You're gonna rinse and scrub in warm soapy liquid. Get into all the nicks and crannies, get rid of all that dirt. Now, once they're clean and rinsed, now comes the sterilization part. You can use a 3% peroxide to do this. If you choose to dilute, beware because it reduces the effectiveness of the peroxide. Throw it in a clean spray bottle. Protect yourself. Spray all over the surface. You can use bleach, but that's harmful chemicals. I'd rather use peroxide. Let it sit for like a half hour, then rinse it all off. You're good to go. Start your seedlings without the disease. This is vital if you're gardening and you're starting seeds indoors. Do not skip this step. I learned my lesson. Last video, I highlighted that most people skip the step of sterilizing their seed starting equipment, and I showed you how. Now, the step that I neglected that led to the problem that got rid of my indoor garden here was soil sterilization. Believe it or not, just because you buy a good product from the store does not mean that it's not full of bug larvae or eggs that are sitting there dormant, just waiting for you to water them and give them heat. 
like you do when you start seeds. To sterilize soil, all you have to do is boil a pot of water and dump it throughout the soil and then cover it with tin foil to allow the heat to kill those eggs. Another method is to put it in a baking sheet, throw it in your oven at like 200 degrees Fahrenheit, just enough, like half hour, 40 minutes, just enough to kill all those eggs. And then you won't be dealing with an infestation of fungal gnats. I'm trying to clear out all the living adults so that I can start my seedlings without this problem. I learned for you. I was actually thinking the same thing. Would freezing end up killing these things? I do live in Canada. It is cold right now, so I thought I could just throw the bags out. And then I read something like this. If you have fungus gnats flying around your house because of house plants or seedling starts, watch to the end of this video. This is a follow up to my other video about sterilizing your soil and it's all based around some of the comments that I've been getting there. So first off, yes, if you sterilize or pasteurize, you will kill the beneficial fungus or bacteria, but you can add those back in by buying something called mycorrhiza, at least some of them. But here are some methods to get rid of those fungus gnats without killing your plants and killing the beneficial fungus. The first method that I read about and then I tried that didn't really work out too well, but I will tell you about it, is to soak your soil in hydrogen peroxide. Like I said, my infestation was too far gone. I had too much soil, so I didn't have enough peroxide, but it could work. Neem oil and soap. By using this product, Mosquito Bits, sprinkled on top of your soil, you're essentially, every time you're watering, you're releasing something that is going to kill them off. But by far, what most people say is most successful is traps to capture the adults, or about an inch or two of gravel or sand on top of the soil. Can't lay their eggs, can't get out. As always, you can find the most recent video in the top left, a related video in the bottom left, and the subscribe button on the right hand side. I will see you in the next video.